Glenn Avon, uh, son of Peter and Marge. Uh, I met Dylan uh, through a couple of my friends, Mike Monjoy and uh, Rob Milkey. And uh, I'd like to tell you a tale of how uh, Dylan and I started a band together. Uh, yes, of course. And uh, when I first met Dylan, uh, we were hanging out at our friend's, the Domi's house. And uh, I saw that Dylan was playing his acoustic guitar, and uh, I immediately went up to him and I was like, oh, you play guitar? You play electric? You know, are you in a band? <laughs> He's like, no, I'm not in a band. You know, all cool, hair. <laughs> He's got that floppy hair. Oh, yeah. You know, Jerry, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and uh, I was like, hey, you want to, you want to, like, start a band? Like, I'm, I'm fresh out, like, I'm in college, you're in college, like, you know, let's have something to do. He's like, yeah, so... We came over, and uh, <laughs> at the time, uh, he had this pick, and uh, it was, uh, it's, it's become like a special pick that uh, we would always have in band practice where you get a rule that, uh, Jared, if you have it, um, okay. it's, uh, don't, don't worry, take your time. Uh, it represented us forming the band and his rule that no matter if he's there or if someone else is playing guitar, he always left a pick because the common thing with guitarists is sometimes you lose your pick. So I've had this pick since 2013, 2014. And uh, <laughs> this pick has been from here in New Jersey to all the way up to Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, it's stayed with me. It's been in my pocket, it's been in my gig bag, it's been in my gig drums. And, uh, you know, I always hold it, uh, I always hold it as a memento. And I remind all my other bands that uh, if you ever need a pick, you can always thank Dylan. Uh, I'd like to propose a little toast. Water, of course. But uh, to a great guitarist and a great friend, uh, we wrote we wrote Run Album and uh, I can't really, I don't really have the songs anymore, but um, it's always a cherished memory of mine to play and have the privilege to be in a band with Dylan. So, you're here. He's cool. here. I didn't know Dylan too closely, because uh, the high school's been taking up a lot of my time, <laughs> but uh, from how what I saw of him, he was pretty awesome. You know, I hear all these stories about him, like the bands. I didn't know about that until right now. I'm in mean, my own band, so I could appreciate that. You know, a good guitarist is hard to find. <laughs> my dad knows that. So uh, yeah, I don't know. Seeing all the pictures up there, seeing all this, it's awesome. You know, he was a great guy. I knew him. He was really good at video games too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't mm -hmm. want to talk about it. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, um, I don't know, he's one of the good ones. And, uh, you know, he's just a great guy, you know. I, I don't know, I don't have any personal memories of him. <laughs> yeah, I'd say something, you know. Oh, thank, you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Chris Delmi. Uh, Dill is a good friend of mine. Uh, my brother met him when they were in sixth grade. I was two years younger, so I was always looking up to them, you know, the, the cool kids I wanted to hang out with. Eventually I got did. I got into the crew and we hung out just like every day. I remember one day, I don't remember what it was, me and my family were fighting, you know, and it was late at night and I needed to get out. So it had to be two o'clock in the morning. And I called Dill. And yeah, he convinced his, his grandmother to, you know, let me come over and spend the night. And I don't think we even slept that night, you know. We, just, we played Monopoly, and we just talked, and he, he allowed me, gave me the space I needed to, you know, get away from what I was going through. Because that's who Dill was. He was there and you needed him. Always. I'll always love you, John.
So, I'm Mike Domi. I met Bill back in sixth grade. I went, I was the new kid at that school. I was by myself. Bill saw me by myself, and he was the person who said, hey, why don't you come sit with me and Mike? <coughs> he was the person who just always included me. He was always there for me whenever I needed anything. As my brother just said, you just need space to talk, or you need some alone time, whatever, <coughs> just get out of the house. He was there. He was the, one of the best people I've ever met. I'll always, I'll always love him. Anybody else like to like to share? Hey everyone, my name is Joseph Vecchio. Uh, I can't say that I've known Dylan uh, since sixth grade. Unfortunately, I wish I did, but I didn't. Uh, I did meet him through my wonderful wife Nicole, who is is still best friends with Emmy and I gotta say in terms of smash players he is <laughs> he is very good um, it was it was always nice coming over to their house because my friends are absolutely awful at smash Bros. so it was, nice, it was nice to have a little bit of competition and definitely definitely Dylan brought that competition that I looked for and it was just nice to sit there and talk with them about the same interests that we had I mean, we would talk for hours on end about just like terrible dev companies and, and just everything revolving around gaming, which is nice, because we, we both shared that hobby together. Uh, I'm 100% going to miss that competitor. <laughs> and uh, I'm gonna miss those cheeks. <laughs> Hi, I'm Liz. Um, I have known Emmy and Dylan together as one unit uh, for, what, seven years? Um, we lived together for a year. Um, I'm going to kind of wing this story because I, I don't remember all of it, but it, it describes their relationship perfectly and Dylan's love for Emmy, so I'm just going to... It's in bits and pieces, so I'm sorry. But um, we were living together when Dylan um, decided to propose to Emmy, and of course I asked him like what are you gonna do like you gotta make it amazing like you can't you can't mess this up like it's gotta be great <laughs> I mean at the time I think was traveling somewhere like Baltimore or there was some aquarium I mean has a thing for octopuses octopi both are correct both are correct great um and so he he was thinking maybe he would meet her down there and do this big grand, I don't know if you even know this. But I didn't know this. Okay, cool. So <laughs> this big thing down there, and for whatever reason, it, it didn't happen. Maybe it was, I don't know where you were. She was somewhere. And we talked about it, and we were trying to figure out, like, this big, ridiculous thing. And, oh, okay, I forget why or what happened. This is a, yes. No, no, I, I forget why he, he wound up not giving it, but um, one night we were, I remember we were sitting in the living room eating ice cream sandwiches in our pajamas, and Dylan was like, I just can't wait. I can't wait any longer. <laughs> I have to just do it. And in my mind, I was like, you idiot, like, you're the big thing. Like, don't, don't do it now. Like, we look awful. And he was just like, no, I can't wait. And... He went and I remember he went into their bedroom where the ring was and he just proposed to her right there when we were eating our, our stupid Trader Joe's ice cream sandwiches that we love. And that just sums up him and them so perfectly that it was just so simple and so pure and just he couldn't wait. And that's just Dylan. And the other memory that I have later, which Emmy doesn't remember, but I swear I told her um, one day in the kitchen after he proposed, I caught him singing um, Death of a Bachelor by Panic at the Disco. Which <laughs> was just, uh, it was just perfect. And he put up with a lot with the two of us. <laughs> um, I'll miss him very much. That's my story. Thank you.
Hello, everybody. My name is Sean Wang. Um, and I knew Dylan ever since I was in fourth grade, so about nine years old. Um, uh, I was, uh, Jared's my best friend, but, you know, Dylan was always like a little brother to us growing up. So, um, it's, um, some of the fondest memories I do have is uh, myself and Dylan and Jared um, up in uh, their attic playing games. Uh, or in the backyard playing knockout basketball. Um, we're both very big into food. We're foodies, so uh, Dylan loved food. Um, so just trying different culinary things was always one of the fondest memories that I had. Um, once when we were about fifth grade, he was in fourth. Um, I saw him use chopsticks better than me. And I was <laughs> astonished. I was like, I, this, is, this is awesome. You know, he loved sushi, he loved lots of different types of food, so those are all some of the biggest, fondest memories I have. Uh, but the one thing about Dill is he's always a person that's willing to help. Um, I love that about him. He was always willing to lend a hand. You know, he was the person you wanted to be there because he made the room a lot better. He made the time and the party a lot more fun. And he was just a sweet and down to honest person. And I'm gonna love him very much. He's one of my best friends. And I know he would want us to remember, you know, the good good times. So there's been so many good, great memories, and you know, I'll never forget you, brother. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Ed Burwell, and I was doing the Sunday school teacher in church. <coughs> and you would think I would have all these great stories about Dylan. But I didn't really know Dylan that well. I knew him as a Sunday school student. He would come in, he would participate, and he would go. But sometimes you pick up things from people non-verbally. And the things I learned about Dylan was he was kind, he was gentle, he was patient. And so that was the vibe I got from Dylan. And hearing all these stories just confirms the stuff I picked up from him without you know, just non-verbally. So, Emily, I'm so sorry for your loss. He was a super guy. And the great stories are, are as, as you guys are giving is, is wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Linda Caribia, and um, I've known Dylan since he was smaller than me, which is hard. <laughs> and uh, the whole family as well. We've been so loving, so kind. I remember them always including me when my family is far, that um, we went out for lunch. I remember a couple of times that they included me on Sundays, or on Thanksgiving, or on Easter. And always thoughtful, always so respectful. And the one thing that I do remember is that attic at Grandma's house. The noise that came from up there is unbelievable. <laughs> but what I also remember too is both Dylan and Jared always helping their grandmother, helping their mother, and, and helping other people. You know, it's the kind of thing where strangers were not strangers in their house. If you were invited, you were family. And um, I remember also getting to meet Emmy. And we all went out for lunch at, um, I want to say Bahama Breeze or something. And we were all sitting there, and it was like a big group, and there were lots of colorful drinks and great food. And I just remember how loving he was to you, just so sweet. And you had disappeared off into, I don't know, the bathroom or somewhere. And I went to go find you because I could get out sooner. But it was Dylan who asked me to go find you because you were gone for too long and he missed you. So I just, <laughs> wonderful, fun memories of him, of, of the whole family, and just lots of love. Thank you. Thank you. everybody around him and uh, I know I've known you for a pretty long time mm. <laughs> I've, uh, that's my cousin <laughs> and I've known, I know him for seven great years
Oh yeah, uh, this is James. Hi. This is Matthew. We're uh, we're Church cousins, cousins. <laughs> along with that guy. Yeah. That's my my cousin. And then that's uh dad. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is uh, uh one of Emily and Dylan's favorite songs. Oh god. everyone's been uh, reciting or telling really uh, shows how much people cared about him and how strong of a positive impact he had on the world. So uh, I hope this song uh, is called Ashokan Farewell. Uh, I hope it conveys how much people will miss him. <coughs>
Hi everyone, I'm Jared, um, Dylan's brother. It's really great to see so many people here uh, to celebrate Dylan, the life that he lived, and the, the effect that he had on us all. I gotta read from this, otherwise I'm gonna have a hard time. <laughs> Um, Dylan was more than a brother. He was my best friend. He was that one person growing up who could, who I could, and would share anything and everything with. As kids, Dylan and I shared a bedroom with a bunk bed, and I remember struggling to get up each morning for school because we had kept each other up for hours every night talking. <laughs> about things like how hard it must be for rock bands to write new songs because it seemed like every sweet guitar riff had already been thought of. <laughs> about things like our dreams and hopes for the future. Uh, we contemplate the mysteries of the universe, like how the Big Bang is basically just a massive slow motion firework and how we're all just so lucky to be here along for the ride. We would talk about how, as humans, are the most intelligent and capable species on the planet. It was our responsibility to take care of this planet and everything on it. Many of you know that Dylan had a massive heart. Uh, he could never resist helping a friend in need, even if it meant sacrificing his own well-being. And when he asked how you were doing, it was because he really genuinely cared about how everyone was doing. While Dylan may have been a big softie with a gold heart, he was also a mean guitar player and singer, a brilliant comedic mind, and both a competitive gamer and a good sport, which is rare. <laughs> <sighs> I say good sport, at least for the most part. Um, there was this one time where Dylan and I had just gotten a new game, Star Wars Battlefront, on the PS2. Um, we would take turns playing. Uh, so my turn had just ended, but Dylan had also just started eating a burrito. <laughs> <laughs> so I started a new match in the game uh, while he finished. Well, Dylan soon finished eating and was adamant that I should quit and turn over the controller. Of course I refused, since I felt entitled to finish my match. <laughs> Dill's response was to then jab at me threateningly with his burrito fork. <laughs> uh, and I, like a supreme dingus, flung my arm out in a shooing motion to ward him off. The very next moment, we were both staring in shock and horror at the fork stuck in my forearm. <laughs> just hanging there all by itself. <laughs> Dylan, of course, immediately shook off that feeling. And as I pulled the fork out of my arm, said it was entirely my fault <laughs> for not having given up the control. Uh, I still have a scar that, that fork made, and I hope it never fades, as silly as it sounds. Uh, it remains as a reminder of that time that I will always cherish. Dylan was one of the funniest, talented, most talented, most caring, kind, and giving people that I've ever known. And he was certainly the strongest person I've ever known. He brought joy, laughter, and love to so many people's lives, and I am so grateful to have been a part of his. Dill didn't practice Santeria. <laughs> he had no crystal ball. But if he had a million dollars, he'd have spent it all on us. <laughs> Woo! Thank you. Thanks for coming today. It's uh, very important to us that you're here. And we're very happy that you are. Um, I got a lot of memories of Dylan, but the first one that stands out was um, just after I met him in 2009. He was going to Montclair State College, and I went up and picked him up. I knew he had his driver's license, so 
I said, you want to drive home? He said, sure. So we got in the car, and it wasn't five minutes that went by before I asked him, how much have you been driving? He said, this is my first time. <laughs> <laughs> and I was uh, asking God for absolution that moment uh, for an incident in Pompano Beach in 1976. Um, we made it home at rush hour that night. And uh, I'll just never forget that because, well, because those things stick out, you know. When I first met him, though, it was just after uh, his mother and I started dating. I needed somebody to help me with a job, and she said, why don't you get my son? I said, sure. I said, I'll pick him up. How will I know him? She said, he's a big boy. He was a big boy, <laughs> and the first thought in my head was I had a tree job, and instead of cutting the trees off, maybe I could just get him to throw the trees in the back of the truck. <laughs> he was a big boy. He was a good worker, too. And another time, we worked right after Hurricane Sandy. And if you had a chainsaw and Hurricane Sandy came by, you had work, and I had a chainsaw. So we had plenty of work. And I came back to see him at, at how he was doing on the job I had given him. And he was picking up leaves and looking at them for 10 minutes. And I said, what's going on here? You know, I walked up and I said, you okay? What's going on? He said, you ever notice how some of the leaves have teeth and some don't? <laughs> You know, I, I did, as a matter of fact. <laughs> um, I even had a book about it in my truck. It's a great way to pick up girls. Um, so we sat for the next half hour, 45 minutes, trying to figure out why there are tooth leaves and lobe leaves and everything like that. And uh, we discovered that we shared something in common that day. Um, and I'll never forget that. So he was a good boy, Bill. Big, kind, like a Hoss Cartwright kind of guy. And I'll always remember him for being that way. And all I can tell you is that, uh, you know, he lives today. He lives in our hearts, in our memories, and he's there. I know it. Thanks all for coming. Here. He's right here. He's my best friend. And I still look at my phone waiting for memes to come in from him. I'm going to miss talking to him so much, but I still talk to him. Everyone will tell you. Everyone who's been around me the past few weeks is like, she's crazy because. I've been talking to the air, I've been talking to Dill, I've been using Dill in the present tense, and I always will, because he was my soulmate. And it's not fair that he was taken so soon, but I'm so lucky, because some people never get to have a love like that. People told us we were perfect together, people told us they were jealous of our relationship. And I'm so, so grateful that when he told me as we first started dating that it was just a fling and he would never get married, I am so glad that I kept pursuing him because I knew that he was the one for me. And there's so much I could say, and I will someday, but right now, I just want to send him off with a bang, and so a lot of you know that Dylan and I initially connected online and started dating because we both love music, and um, I like to sing, and Dylan had an amazing voice, and he played the guitar, and my ex had played the guitar, and he said he played the guitar, but he did not play the guitar. So to test Dylan, I said, well, I want you to learn the, the main hook from Snow by the Red Hot Chili Peppers, and if you know that song, that's a pretty tough hook, and the next time we hung out, he had learned it perfectly, and I knew that he was the one. So, in honor of him, um, I would like to be the first funeral service to get a noise complaint, <laughs> and I know he would want people leaving here with music ringing in their ears and smiles on their faces, and so I really would like it if everyone who knows this song would sing along with us, and if you don't, just strum on your guitar. Um, but this song 
totally encapsulates Dylan. It was one of his favorites. It's called I Believe in a Thing Called Love. <laughs> Come on. All the feelings that you're making me feel. Oh. My heart's a girl and driving your behind the steering wheel. Touching you. everybody uh, for coming and uh, you definitely say that uh, this is the, the one of the happiest funerals I've ever done. <laughs>